Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, back for another episode on beginning C Sharp with Unity. We're going to dive a little deeper into objects. In this lesson, you're going to learn the difference between reference types and value types. Now, before we start, my name is Vegetarian Zombie, and on this channel, you can find lots of videos on game development, game tutorials, and occasional playthroughs. It's been a challenge with a full-time demanding job and a family with two teenagers, which is why videos have been so slow. But big changes have happened to me this year. Last month, I found out that due to a difficult economic environment, my job of 12 years ends next April. I've decided to go independent, full-time, on teaching and tutorial development. I spent years writing and making videos on my weekends. It's now time to turbocharge this. First, I set up YouTube channel memberships. These will provide early access to videos as I produce them. This also provides for thank yous in the credits and office hour live streams for members. I have also set up a Patreon for my main website, jesrin.com. With Patreon, you'll be able to view and download my most popular videos, including this course. These videos are ad-free and sponsor-free. There are also a ton of articles on a variety of topics. There's a lot more to come in the next few months. That said, please let me know what kind of topics you'd like for me to cover in the comments below. Note, I'll be releasing videos on Unity game development pretty soon. Okay, as you know, C-sharp has lots of different data types. You've been using them throughout this series. You have strings, ints, floats, and booleans. There are Unity types like mono behaviors, and in the last episode, you defined your own type, such as the fighter class. Some time back, you learned that variables are either a reference type or a value type. For the vast majority of this course, you've been using value types, but with the introduction of the class, you are now officially using reference types. Just for a little bit of a side note, the string is actually a reference type that behaves like a value type, but that's beyond the scope of this. Now, it's important to understand what is a value type and what is a reference type because they behave in different ways. So let's get started with the struct. The struct is just like a class. It has state and behavior. You define a struct just like a class, except you use the struct keyword instead of the class keyword. The big difference is a class is a reference type and a struct is a value type. Let's see how they behave in action. Okay, here's the demo from where we last left off. We created a simple fighter that has a name and strength, but also can speak. Open up the fighter script. Now let's do something fun. Change the fighter definition from a class to a struct. Save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. It runs exactly as before. What might have changed? Well, everything to be frank. Open up my object script. Let's run an experiment. Update the code to the following. This time, we did not create a new fighter object. We copied Conan and turned him into Aragorn. Before we run this, what do you think will print out on screen? Will it print out both names or will it be something else? Switch back to Unity, run your game. Press the button. It works just like before. Okay, now open your fighter script again. Change it back to a class. Now take a moment of pause. What do you think will print out to the screen? We've changed this from a value type to a reference type. Save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. Press the button. And look at that. We now have two Aragorns. What the heck just happened? Okay, what you saw may seem weird, but it has everything to do with memory. Let's break this down. Every time you create a variable, you are storing that data in your computer's memory. That's right. All the demonstrations so far have been using your system's memory. No surprise there. Yet, you haven't been managing those resources. You kind of just set it and forget it. That's because we've been using value types. They live in a place called the stack where life is quick and fleeting. You saw a method in the last episode. It's a place where you call code. When you call a method or function, that creates a stack frame. Then, when you define a value type, it's added in that stack frame at the top of the stack. So here we are calling the start game method. It defines the player's name. 
This is added to the stack. Next, the method calls the run game loop method. This defines two variables and it adds them to the current stack frame. This method then calls the end game method. This defines the points variable and it's added to the stack. Once the method reaches the end, it's popped off the stack and the memory is reclaimed. Once the end game is popped off, the others are popped off as they reach the end of their methods. Reference types are different. When we create an object, we typically want that object to stick around for a long time. Objects live in a special place called the heap. It sounds pretty bad, like a trash heap, but all our objects just love it there. They lounge around all day drinking margaritas. So the stack is for quick access and use, and the heap is for guests who don't leave the party after the party ends. Objects stay in the heap for as long as references point to them, and this is done by way of a reference count. Every new object starts with a reference count of one, since there is one variable pointing at that object. Now the Berserker object has two references. Some random point in time, c -sharp will run a garbage collector. This is a process that goes through the heap and checks all the objects. If an object has zero references to it, that means it's no longer being used and it's ready for garbage collection. Garbage collecting is not free. It takes processing power. This can directly impact frame rate and game performance. Game developers often recycle objects to keep the garbage collector at bay. A bullet hell type game may have hundreds of bullets on the screen, but those bullets are just recycled. When a bullet flies off the screen, it is just repositioned to another location to be fired again. So how do you decrease a reference count? One way is for the reference to go out of scope. After the if block, the leader variable is no longer in scope, so the reference count decreases. Another way is to null out the variable. Now, the berserker object has no active references to it, so the object is available for garbage collection. Garbage collection is a non-deterministic process, which in plain English means no one knows when it's going to happen. It could happen immediately, or it may take a little time. Okay. You understand the difference between the stack and the heap, but let's explore their behavior. Take something like this. Here we have a variable and that we set to 10. Now let's create a new variable based off of the old one. You are copying the value of x and assigning it to y, and that's the key point. You copy the values, and they exist independently of each other. If you change one value, the other isn't affected. Now let's look at our fighter class. Here we create a fighter object. This fighter lives in the heap and we just created a reference to it. A reference simply points to the location of an object. It's like a mailing address to a house. When you do something like this, you are copying the address to another variable. You aren't copying the object itself. It's the same object. Now, the object has two variables or references pointing to it. When you change the property, such as the name in, say, two different variables, you're just changing one object. The struct is a little different. A struct looks exactly like a class, but a struct is a value type. When you assign a struct object to another variable, you actually copy that object since the struct lives on the stack. Structs are useful to group similar data together. For instance, in Unity, there is a struct called a vector3. This represents x, y, and z coordinates of a location in 3D space. You use these all over the place. It's just a simple collection of properties and methods. You generally don't need them to live long. As a good rule of thumb, always start with a class when defining objects, and later you can reevaluate your usage and you can switch to a struct if necessary. In most places, you can probably get away with using a class. Now, there is a danger working with classes. Check this out. Notice there is a variable, but there is no object. Oftentimes you'll set up your variables and later assign them objects at some point down in the script. It's an empty reference because the object isn't created. If you try to use it, say call a method on it, you'll crash your program because it's an empty reference or otherwise known as a null reference or null pointer. If a reference can be null, it's always good to put it in a null check. You will run into this error lots and lots of times, especially in Unity. 
When this happens, it just means you didn't initialize something or forgot or forgot to add an object somewhere. Well, that's it for this video. That was a whole lot of theory. Don't worry, we're going to get back to writing code in the next video. In that next video, we'll dive into the world of methods and you'll get a quick primer on access control in the process. See you then.